Welcome to Real Physics. Last time I got a little bit of a shitstorm for a comment video on Sabine Hossenfelder, and for that reason I want to take the opportunity to express my support and admiration for what I believe is the best science channel we have right now. And I'm serious about this because she represents two key elements of science which are honesty and courage, and i tell you why. She's willing to address incredibly controversial issues such as puberty blockers, for nothing in return, rates and IQ, sex and gender, and so on. And she even positively mentions an Italian physicist who was fired from CERN for a factually true statement. So I think this is incredibly courageous and no wonder that she is attacked by the mainstream. She's sometimes called a science popularizer, but let's reflect a little bit what that means. I think popularizing science is inherently a little bit of a misnomer, because obviously what you can do is just recount the incredible achievements of science and this and that, and there are very good channels out there. But the key question is, you want to transfer something new, or you just want to rehash and recount all this scientists are convinced of. And there are a lot of channels which are just parroting the usual stuff. And interestingly, there are people and even organizations who claim to be scientific, oh, follow the science, but they lack the key element of science, which is critical thinking. So I think Sabine Hossenfelder uniquely combines information about science with truly scientific questioning if the content is actually true. So she gets attacked by these parroters, funnily by one who falsely calls himself a professor without being it. So listen carefully where this criticism comes from and I'm happy to offer my support saying to these critics go F yourself. What this really means that Hassenfelder hit the point where it really hurts and where it really hurt was when Hassenfelder publicized the critique of people like Andrew D. Jackson of the gravitational wave discovery with very sound arguments, even if she wouldn't agree with everything. But even more importantly, Hassenfelder is one of the very few people who dare to challenge the absurd proposals of a new collider in questioning this new toy of high energy physicists. You're not only messing with a huge amount of groupthink, but also with a multi-billion dollar enterprise. And this requires really extreme courage. So there is the science philosopher Paul Feyerabend who says that these critics would be tortured as in the Middle Ages. It's not that heretics of science get a better treatment. It's just that civilization as a whole has become more civilized and certainly a lot of people would wish her scene burn on the stake. What I also really like, and this is also highly controversial, her general take on the crisis of science. And yes, she's correct in calling that rather a degeneration than a crisis. She's very open, honest and sincere and very outspoken. This so-called research has been going on for four decades and what's come out of it besides papers? Nothing, nada, niente. One of the statements I totally agree with. And I think the key thing is that she addresses the general problem we have, not only in physics, but also in science. And yeah, that's also what I'm saying. There is a deeper reason behind. So I agree with a lot of things here. And if you ask me, do I want to surf on the popularity of the channel? Absolutely, I take the blame. However, I also feel a little bit entitled to do so because it's a simple fact that we have a lot of overlapping material and I covered a lot of things and I'm just happy if she also covers these kind of things and we're well, just giving a little example that this is not a discussion about scientific priority because there is no scientific priority in stating that Brian Greene promotes nonsense, but I feel justified to say, okay, this is additional evidence for this fact. So I will certainly continue to cover also her material. Yeah, and sometimes I may have a question if there is a little contradiction in my view in what she's saying. But from a more general perspective, nothing is so perfect that it cannot be improved. And yes, I think one basic problem we YouTubers have here, we live in the present. And that's what Daniel Kahneman calls 
what you see is all there is the focus on the present the focus on what is in front of your eyes covers all your mental state and this is a well-known cognitive illusion which is of course amplified by youtube algorithms that push the topical against the relevant so we youtubers have the problem we are in that quandary we must find the right way between being clicked and being not too superficial and in this respect sometimes i wish she had the opportunity to go a little bit to the history such as reading a book like robert sanders if you talk about gravitational physics which gives you still another perspective on the actual problems she discusses in gravitational physics. I wish she had the opportunity to read books like Andrew Pickering or even um, Gary Tobbs, because if you read these books, you understand that the problems she's rightly criticizing right now, we saw them developing already a couple of decades ago. And even for the existential crisis of science, the crisis of honesty, there are books like Bruce G. Charlton, an excellent scientist, and I don't think there is any harm in quoting other people's work. And yes, I'm convinced that if you want really profoundly address the problems of current science, you need to dive into history and you need to look at the past century if you want to understand why we have this kind of science today the 21st century scientists i must get this result that fits my narrative versus the 19th century scientists i must find the explanation for this phenomenon in order to truly understand nature and that's what i'm trying to do look at the history and there is not only little albert i think this is all nonsense and little albert agrees Sabine likes to quote, but the Mount Rushmore of physics. There is also people like Bohr, Dirac and Schrödinger, who lived in an entirely different culture of physics. And this I would identify as the deeper reason of the mess we find contemporary physics in. So I wish she would sometimes dig a little bit deeper into the history and philosophy of science, also mentioning people like Kuhn and Popper, she does mention them. But of course, as I said, it's hard to go viral with a philosophy of physics video. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it. And if you're interested in fundamental physics and the kind of stuff I explained, subscribe to this channel.